So I have 99% confidence that there was a Big Bang. Not 100% because, of course, we could be wrong. We could be as misguided as a Ptolemaic astronomer who's discovered another epicycle. But 99% confidence. But let me add one more proviso. That 99% confidence applies to the Big Bang theory back to the stage when the universe was about one second old, nearly to the beginning. But if you want to ask what happened within that first second, in the first millisecond or the first microsecond, then we are far less confident. The reason for that is that when we go back to the first tiny fraction of a second, the universe was so hot and so dense that the conditions were beyond anything we can simulate here on Earth or test experimentally in the laboratory. So when we get to the first tiny fraction of a second, we lose our foothold in experiment and things become uncertain. What happened immediately after the Great Explosion is one of the most difficult enigmas current cosmology has to figure out. Scientists are faced with a theoretical problem that has no easy solution. The fundamental law of the universe, the law of gravity that determines attraction among matter, was not functioning during those first moments. If it had, the matter that originated after the explosion would have contracted again, since its great density would exercise a strong attraction to itself. We have a very good theory which explains the behavior of atoms. This is what's called the quantum theory. We also have a good theory of gravity, which Einstein developed, called general relativity. But we don't have a theory which combines gravity with the quantum principle. This normally doesn't matter because in most parts of the universe we don't have to worry about gravity and quantum theory simultaneously. Gravity is important in big objects like planets and stars, whereas quantum theory is important only in single atoms, where gravity is unimportant. But if you imagine the very beginning of the universe, when something as heavy as a star is squeezed down smaller than a single atom, then you have to worry about gravity and also about quantum effects. And we have no theory that combines those two phenomena. To explain this anomalous behavior of matter, which defying the laws of gravitational attraction expanded instead of contracting, the physicist Alan Guth has proposed a theory of inflation. It's not fully accepted in the scientific community, but it is a most suggestive idea to explain why this colossal expansion was produced. Uh, inflation is really an attempt to answer the question of what was the bang of the Big Bang? What is it that set the universe into expansion? Uh, and the answer that the inflationary theory proposes uh, is that the expansion was started by a peculiar form of matter which can turn gravity on its head uh, and cause gravity to become repulsive. Uh, in fact, today we've recently discovered that the universe appears to be accelerating, which means that perhaps there is a density of a similar type of matter uh, filling the universe at the present time. Uh, but what I'm talking about is something which would be would have been much more dramatic, uh, a material with a much higher density of matter, much higher energy density, uh, that would have existed in the early universe, uh, which could have caused the universe to start to dramatically expand uh, at a fantastic rate. In the smallest fraction of the first second of time following the Big Bang, the forms and kinds of matter that composed the universe were determined. Then, at that moment, in accordance with some strange physical laws, it was determined that matter would be grouped and distributed in a very peculiar way, forming galaxies or accumulations of stars.
We find ourselves, therefore, facing a new and strange cosmic code. The universe's behavior seems to be governed by new and strange laws. Dark matter, gamma rays, and black holes are realities and basic elements of the universe's structure that were detected when man, thanks to the technological development of telescopes, became aware of the limitation of his vision. The human eye sees only a small part of what electromagnetic radiation produces, that of the light that is visible to us. But the greater part of the universe's reality is evidenced in other wavelengths that we cannot see, such as infrared and ultraviolet radiation, radio waves, X-rays, or gamma rays. This new and disconcerting face of the universe is the greatest challenge of human knowledge. And thanks to astronautics, inscrutable outer space has come even closer to man. It all began in 1957, when the former Soviet Union put the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, in orbit around the Earth. Thus began the Space Age, whose first human traveler was the Russian Yuri Gagarin in 1961. Since then, nearly 50 people have left the atmosphere, and two of them, the Americans Armstrong and Aldrin, became great figures of the 20th century when they took the first human steps on the moon. Another Russian, Madanov, boasts the record for remaining in space after staying a little over one year on the Mir space station. With astronautics, the universe ceases to be an object of observation and becomes a place to be conquered and colonized. Thus, the most audacious hope is imagining a future in which permanent human communities can be established on large space stations once the conditions of limited gravity in nearby outer space are controlled. Telescopes draw a more complete and real map of the universe for us, while satellites and space probes allow a direct experience of the cosmos. Given the immensity and creativity offered by this new image of the universe, it's inevitable to wonder whether or not human beings are the only conscious inhabitants of such an immense expanse. With the exploration of space, the desire to seek other forms of life seems inevitable. To seek evidence of settings similar to our own planet, which might help us figure out the enigma that emerged from the great explosion that still continues expanding time and space. This image shows the universe when it was a mere 300,000 years old. It was taken in 1992 by the Kobe satellite, sent up by NASA to study background radiation, and it served to prove that there were some areas with greater density of matter than others, as if, after the Big Bang, matter had not been distributed homogeneously in all directions throughout space. Once again, the universe disconcerted cosmologists upon showing that matter had accumulated in areas of space where later the galaxies and their stars had formed. 
The rest was empty.